Hey everybody, this is Zoltan, and we're going to get started here with Road to Glory, um, Milan Juniors. And this will be a really interesting team because uh, it started out as Diddling, which is a team in the other Europe uh, category. And I actually released some of their best players. Um, they weren't very good to begin with, but I got them down from a two-star team down to a one-star team. Uh, so this team right now is definitely one of the worst teams in all of Europe. If you look at typical uh, Serie B teams, they're typically around two and a half, maybe two stars. Um, but this team is, uh, even among this lower division is extremely bad. It's a one-star team. Uh, let me just take a look here at who's on the team. As I mentioned, I got rid of a lot of players um, on the original uh, Doodleage team, and I've customized this team. They've got the old um, Milan uniforms, and you can see here's an example. And what the the backstory that I'm going to do is. I have this guy here is Paolo Maldini and he is taking over the youth team of Milan and he's now 50 years old so he's obviously not very good anymore and he is a right back um, who can play center back as well and really slow he's got all red numbers here um, but he's 50 years old so I expect he's going to retire uh, but right now I'm using him as like a player coach, player manager. Uh, that's kind of the backstory. And also his son, who also looks a lot like him, is um, an 18-year-old prospect uh, that's our starting center forward. And he has uh, some opportunity to grow. Uh, most of the rest of the players, uh, some of them were on the Doodleage team from before. I think it's a Luxembourg team, so they have a lot of um, European players, Belgium and Albania, Spain. Uh, I did add a few other uh, players, especially f uh, from Italy. I added some free agents to the team who are, as you can see, all of them are in the 67 or below. So we have a lot of um, mid-60s. It's a pretty bad team and there's 34 members on the team. So it's a one-star team and the road to glory means we're going to turn this into a a very good team, hopefully uh, eventually getting into Syria and uh, Europa and Champions League. Uh, that's going to be quite a task as you can see coming up here, especially if you really look at how bad we really are. Uh, according to the rankings, we are ranked 540. Uh, so the only teams below us are a few Thailand teams, and uh, it's pretty bad. So, yeah, we're, we're about as bad as you can get. Um, so how are we going to compete? Well, first of all, it's all about salary. Um, I want to take a look here at negotiations so you can see the transfer budget is very low. 173000 is how much we have for the budget. And then the salary budget is even worse. We only have 27000 left. Uh, one of the biggest problems is going to be increasing the salary budget because even among the players that I currently have, many of them... As you can see, their salaries are in the 30000 range. So even if I sell them, I'm only going to create a void of $30,000. And it's going to take quite a few of these guys uh, to get rid of them in order to even just get a, a couple hundred thousand uh, salary budget. So I, I'm really limited in salary. Uh, transfer budget is not going to be as bad, but the salary budget is almost untenable. Uh, if we look here quickly at what you can do to fix that a little bit is budget settings. Uh, the way it's set up, this is the default. Uh, I'm going to move everything to receive everything as salary budget. Um, and then I'm going to pay this 
uh, with transfer budget. So as much as possible, I'm going to try to receive everything into the salary budget to get that up. And part of the reason I'm doing this is to try to improve the team through the youth team. So as you can see here, there's a good six or seven players who already are higher than most of my starters. So a good chunk of these guys will be able to come into the team, but the problem is if you look at their first annual salary is already above what I currently have. So that's going to make this really, really difficult um, because these guys are actually going to get better and their salaries are eventually going to go up. So I'm going to try to bring in as many of these guys as I possibly can. And the only way to do that is by selling a lot of players, which I've already set up a good number of players here that I'm planning to sell all of which are in the um, mid to low 60s. So that I'm not going to get much money for them, but it will free up some salary that will allow me to get more um, of those 16, 17, 18-year-old players out of the youth team and try to improve them a bit. I'm also going to be scouting. I have some specific uh, positions I'm here looking for. Uh, but most important is to be focusing on still developing players. So obviously I'm going to be starting with a youth team um, because this is that's the idea behind this road to glory is we're having a Milan youth movement. And so I do have uh, quite a few players that I need to um, renew their contracts. Uh, but before we dive into that, I want to make sure that we focus on a couple more things. And one of them is youth team training. Uh, so as you know, we're going to be using several of these players. But as you can see in the youth team training, the default is set up for balanced, which is not a good way um, to train. For example, if I look at uh, a center back and he's balanced he's only getting one point in each of these categories if I choose a training style of one of these like destroyer now you can see that it's much more geared towards what a center back would actually need so these are um, or the other possibility is build up and so I've got the two choices here uh, I'm gonna choose for this guy destroyer so he will start developing those traits more applicable to his position. So the, it's kind of tedious. You do have to go in here and, and make all these little changes. Um, one thing to look out for if you have somebody that has a really low stamina, um, you can train him and then switch back later on. Now, there is the possibility of doing a focus training and just getting that stamina up. But the problem is you're only going to be using five slots total with focus training. Whereas if you select one of these preset training settings, you're getting a lot more than five. So I would suggest find something like box to box, for example, which will give me a really good boost on stamina because that's where this guy is weak. Uh, he can also use the balance. I think um, that's another good thing for this. Uh, particular training setting uh, but later on I might want to use him as a classic 10 or or some other you know orchestrator or something so I can switch that later uh, but for now I think it makes sense to use this so that I can really focus on the areas that he needs to uh, develop the most right now that would be stamina uh, because a 62 is just not going to be a very effective player and especially in the central midfield so you do have to go through and spend a little bit of time focusing on uh, here's Bernie Sanders so doesn't look like him at all but I'm gonna make him a destroyer I think that makes sense and you know you can go through each one and make a decision now I also have a playing style where my center forwards uh, I like to use post players so by training them in that now as a youth player I think it will make sense um, that they'll start to develop in the way that uh, is similar to my style of play. 
Uh, so yeah, we can go in here and just, you know, look at what they need. Uh, this guy might be more of a classic 10, so I could, he's uh, got the stamina, so I don't need to focus on a box to box, for example. Uh, so spend a little bit of time going in there, getting that all set up. And then we can um, put players on the transfer list because I want to try to sell a good number of players right from the very first transfer window. And I do have this set up so that the general settings when I first started, uh, the transfer frequency was high. So, uh, you know, I want to try to sell as much as I can, get a lot of turnover so that I have a chance to improve my team. Um, normal difficulty with um, negotiation and the starting budget. I keep everything at normal, even though it's going to be really tough with this very low budget. And uh, we have a uh, professional setting and dollars and, and every five days is my first initial setup. So what I'm going to do right now is go into negotiations and look at who needs to be re-signed. Uh, as you can see here on the right side, it says contract ends 8-31-2020. So he's got basically one year left on his contract. Um, now I do have Maldini that's still here and he actually has two years left, but I believe he's probably going to be retiring because he's 50 years old. Um, so let's take a look. We can actually sort this according to how many years left use ascending order and that shows me that I've got a good 16 18 people or, or something that are all still in the 2020 so they only have one year left and the choice is either to resign them or sell them and so I can just flip over here to see if he's on my transfer list which I I, I set up before I started uh, this video and I'm going to go ahead and break this into different groups because I have several players, as you can see here, for example, you see the check mark uh, because I've put him on my list. He's somebody who I feel he's 23 years old already and I can go ahead and sell him, get some salary so that I can use that, turn it around and try to sign uh, some of these youth players. Uh, he has a good market value of 550, uh, but his annual salary is 34,000. That's not going to help very much uh, because if you remember, the top guy on the list of youth players is demanding about 140,000. So I'm going to need to sell several of these players, even just to sign one or two of those youth prospects. Uh, now there is one thing here that I wonder if anybody has an idea. Uh, if you're a little bit younger, you do have a higher market value, and the older players, it's a little less. So you'll see the difference, um, and some of it has to do with what position you play as well. But look at this guy, suddenly jumped up to 502,000 because he's only 16 years old. So that's a benefit to be younger. And here's the one that I think is kind of an anomaly. I have a right wing. Uh, his name is Lucif, and his market value is 715. You would think at 715,000, that's pretty good. He must be a good young player, but actually he's 23 years old. Really doesn't make sense if you compare to Suleiman, who is the same overall he's also the same position left wing or right wing and he's younger so Suleiman 19 years old you would think would be worth more and he's actually worth about a third or maybe about half of what this guy his market value uh, so you need to look at the release fee as well because obviously no team is going to offer more than the release fee because otherwise they would just pay that so you can't negotiate beyond the release fee. Um, those are the two numbers that we should be looking at. So I'm putting a lot of these guys on the market. Uh, I have, if you see a little purple checkbox there, for example, I'm putting this guy in the market because I know that I have another left back on the youth team 
uh, that will eventually replace this guy and his overall is already higher than this guy so or I th maybe I think it's about the same uh, so why not go ahead and sell the guy I currently have make a little bit of money on the transfer budget bring a new person in and see him rise uh, in value as I play him more and more often so that's kind of the strategy on this um, but because of the fact that I have so many players that I need to re-sign uh, as you can see almost like 20 players I'm gonna have to break this up into groups and the reason for doing that is oftentimes um, they come back with some kind of a ridiculous counter offer that I can't get rid of and then I will have wasted uh, him because that player will not negotiate if they're suddenly asking for some kind of a, a win bonus or appearance bonus and they just won't get rid of it so you have to pretty much um, back out of the game and reload uh, unfortunately that's the only choice because I only have 27,000 salary budget it's not like I even have a choice on this I really cannot be offering more than what they currently make so here's a good example I've got this guy Maldini I want to renew his contract uh, this is his annual salary right now, and I can't offer more than three years because he's too young. Uh, I don't know why that's a rule, but um, I'm going to go ahead and offer this 89000 which you can see is exactly the same as his current annual salary. Uh, I can go to the next guy and look if he's on the transfer list. He's not, so I will need to re-sign this guy as well, so I'll go ahead and offer him the same as what he was offering. Um, already getting 35,000 we can see that's the same as his current salary so we go through one by one I can make a a grouping of maybe three or four of these guys I want to renew this guy uh, again I cannot give him more um, he's considering other clubs so this guy could be a problem he might actually try to come back with a counter offer above what I want to give and let's try to do one more here so he is 29,000 and we can do these first four guys I don't want to go beyond that because it will be somewhat of a miracle if I can actually get all four of these guys to accept this initial deal and then I'll have to go to the next group of three or four guys not this one because he's he's for sale but these next guys after that so we'll just go in a group and try to sell as many of these other players at the same time as trying to renew the contract of the guys that I just offered a moment ago so save this and the first time through we'll probably not be able to make it I think it'll be difficult to get all four of these and we can advance time five days will pass and let's see what we get so maybe we'll get an offer on somebody for a transfer that would be good but usually doesn't happen right in the beginning but I will get a response here so if it just says all we need now is your signature that means that he accepted so that's the first one so that's good the second one as well third one as well and the fourth one wow um, yeah I was surprised to see all four of them accepted so we can go into negotiations and we got lucky on that one so let's um, well actually I'll just flip over here to see off 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 if he asks for an appearance bonus or a win bonus he won't negotiate that out it'll be non-negotiable and so you really just have to start over because it's so high that it's almost double the salary especially at this low level and I can't do that I don't have the salary <laughs> it's not like I'm uh, not being realistic um, some people feel like okay we shouldn't 
save the game and then reload if it doesn't come out the way we want, um, I have no choice. I literally have the worst team in the world. And so therefore my budget, which is the algorithm is tied to the value of the team, is also extremely low. So I really don't have any choice. Uh, so I do have to uh, go through and accept each one of these and you'll see the uh, the budget stays the same. And so I'll go through and accept all four of these contracts. So these guys are re-signed now. All right, now that I did that, I can go ahead and save. And I simply will go right back to the negotiating table and pick uh, four more guys. So. Yeah, keep everything the same, 29,000. And let's see, it's the same, okay. Uh, so yeah, the thing I'm looking for is, look, he's on the transfer list. He already has two teams interested in him, so no need to renew his contract. Uh, this guy is on the list, but uh, no team has contacted yet, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with him. Uh, but here's one player that is not on the list, so I can go ahead. I need to renew him because he is also a 2020 and again, I can only offer three-year contracts because every one of these players is low. Uh, here's another one. I think he was uh, on the original um, Dundelang team. He's from Luxembourg. So I'm going to renew him. And he can actually go for five years because uh, he's actually a little bit older. I will probably be selling him eventually at some point. Um, I hope that it, he does accept this because it says we need to meet the player's expectations or he may choose another team. What you really want to see there is that the player is happy with the team and it's going to be really easy to re-sign him. In that case, you can sometimes ask for a little bit less. Um, but in this case, it's only 28000 I'm just going to keep that at the same proposed annual salary as what he had before, his current one. So I've got, let's see, um, let's try one more. I need to renew this guy. 28,000 again. And so we're going to do four more guys. And there's a bunch of other players who are already being contacted and I would assume I'm going to start selling some players here because remember I have the transfer set to high and so let's um, go ahead and save that and we might have to do this one a couple times now unfortunately I might not get a response as fast as I did with the first grouping uh, because I don't know why, but as time goes on, it takes longer for people to respond. So I'm not sure if all four of these guys are going to come back with their answer yet. But I would expect that I will get a transfer offer here. And so I got one. Um, now let's see what we got. All right, so down here, this red arrow indicates that this man received uh, an offer, transfer offer for 162,000. Uh, his market value is 203, so it seems a little low. But if you look at his release fee, it's only 180,000. So they're probably not going to come up much higher anyway. It's not really worth it for me to negotiate an extra eight or 10,000. Uh, on my transfer budget because that's not really the number that I'm caring about right now. I need to focus on salary budget. 
And so I need to get some money here as fast as I can. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this. And there, I got a, I doubled my salary budget. So I went up another 27000 uh, The transfer budget really doesn't matter as much because I'm not looking to buy anybody at this point. Uh, but I will like I would like to bring in some youth players, and this gets me a little bit closer to that. So now I'm at fifty four thousand, and I can go ahead. I, I'm going to switch this now to daily rather than just five days, so that I can maybe trigger a response from the transfer market a little bit more often. And I probably should have done that the previous five days because that f that first and second week seems to be when you get a lot of activity all right so this guy now has left the team so I need to advance one more day see if I get another offer nothing well, that's not good. And remember, I still have those four guys um, that I offered the contract renewal. And I'm still waiting for them to respond. So if they don't come back with a reasonable response, I'm going to have to start back at my save point and then try to do this again. Or if I don't feel like I'm selling enough players, then I might have to do that as well because... Uh, I, you know, I've done this a few times and I can tell you right now that I'm, I'm getting less activity than I normally would. Uh, I've had other times when I almost get a transfer offer every day. So the fact that I am so behind right now, I got one more. I don't really care about the scouting results right now, so I'm just going to look at the transfer offer. And this guy, Hemmer. Um, transfer fee 131 now his market value is 162 but look his release fee is 146 so I'm probably not going to get much more for him I might as well just go ahead and take that and so that will increase my transfer budget 131,000 uh, but most importantly my salary budget is now at 21,000 so if I wanted to, I have enough that I can actually bring in a youth player, for example, uh, maybe this uh, AMF attacking midfielder. Uh, first annual salary is 70000 so I now have enough to bring him in. Uh, I might want to just wait, though, and see how much I can get and try to go for the better player uh, so I can give him some playing time right from the beginning of the season. And so I'm going to hold on to this 76,000 and try to see if I can get another 76,000 or so and double that. Uh, I do have a, a list now of several players that I can start to look at. And eventually, later on down the road, I might be able to purchase an upgrade uh, maybe in the mid-season transfer window. Uh, so I'm going to advance uh, a little bit more, see if I can get some more activity here. And so this is kind of tedious, you know, what we're going through, um, because we're dealing with a Road to Glory team. So this is a team with a really low budget. Okay, so Hemmer just left. And we're going to have to figure out to do whatever we can to utilize the youth team as a way to increase the value of this team and just play my way through it because as you win more games um, more and more of your players start getting roles on the team and if you're not playing road to glory you don't notice it that much but getting a role like team leader or a favorite player of, of fans is going to increase fan favorite bonuses every month which will definitely help um, because of the way I have my budget set up. It's all going to go towards salary. Uh, so that's going to be the way for me to increase my salary. Because remember, if you have a player that's even in the high 70s, they are going to be worth a million dollar salary per year. And I don't have anywhere near that. 
so I definitely need to sell players or increase in every way that I possibly can just to be able to afford even just a mediocre player in the 77 to 79 range. Okay, so we got one more guy here that received an offer. I still haven't heard back from those other players, uh, but this is a low level. Uh, no reason to negotiate because transfer fee is 144000 and his release fee is 158. So I don't really have much room here to negotiate, so I'll go ahead and accept this. And most importantly, it frees up some salary budget. And as you can see, my transfer budget continues to go up. But I can't even use that 611000 because the salary budget is so low that there's just nobody to sign at that ridiculously low level. Uh, and I'm mostly going to be using that just for my youth team anyway. Uh, so let's see. I think I have one more day before our first game. Uh, so there's going to be a cut scene here. No, nothing. So let's see what happened. Um, all right, so I got a response. So this guy said he is ready now for the signature, so that means he accepted the deal. Delgado as well. Suleiman as well. Um, did I just have three? And for all four of these guys accepted the deal. Wow. Okay, that's a good thing. So... I will go in here and take the deal for each one of these guys. So that's the, uh, make sure everything is off. You don't want to accept a deal that has a, a win bonus or appearance bonus. And sh should be none of these will affect anything. All right, so I've got those four taken care of. Now, if we take a look at, um, we have still one. All right, he's on the list, so we're not we're not going to renew him. But we, we need to do this guy. This one, so that's the second one we need. He's on the list. He's not, so that's number three. Four, he's on the list. Four. We got four more left, so I got one more grouping to do. And the other guys are still on the list. Um, but I'm not selling nearly as much as I was expecting. Uh, but let's take a look here at my current situation. Uh, I am 102,000 salary budget, which is, n oh, it's enough for the number two guy. So if I felt I needed a, a left midfielder or a left winger, you can see he is at least green on the left wing. Uh, but to be honest, um, and this is something I, I, I think is a little strange that for some reason, just because he's an LMF instead of an LWF, that it goes from 67 down to 63 or 64, which is ridiculous. Just, I don't know how much that affects his play, but it does seem to make the team overall less when I put him there. And it may be better just to keep the guy I currently have. Um, so if I do bring that guy in, I'm probably just going to use him sparingly and eventually sell him and just just try to cash in. Uh, so this is my current team. As you can see, I've started to sell a few players, but most of them were backups. Uh, I think all of my starters are not on the transfer list. So I'll be playing with most of these guys. And all of these guys, other than Paolo Maldini, are young. So I would imagine that they will all be 
um, their overall is going to be increasing as I play them. So I'm going to save this here and I think we can also compare and I, I mentioned there before that I was able to sell more players so if we look at because I did this once before uh, you know, I looked at the wrong thing if you look at the the negotiation my transfer budget is 611,000 salary budget is only 102 um, so remember those numbers and if you look at where I am on the schedule right now it is one day before match day so unless something happens here I think that my transfer rate is low so there might be a cutscene league opener chapter one meet the press with Chuck Todd so I will make the fans proud by the way I customized that back scene there is a there is a way to customize your um, advertisers so because of the fact that this was doodleage which is from Luxembourg I had to change all of my official partners to Italian ones so I didn't get any offers there so really I'm looking at facing a team that has probably a little bit better than me yeah they've got actually their center forward is the guy that was on my team before so I actually gave him to them um, generously um, when I edited uh, just to get my doodleage team down to a one-star Milan juniors so I will be facing some players that I actually got rid of uh, but you can see across the board everyone is basically in the high 60s low 70s kind of range compared to my team which is more low 60s to mid 60s so it's a significant difference I think it's kind of a one-star team compared to a two-star team so I've got my work cut out for me this and this is just episode one so I will be playing in episode two I will have um, a chance to do some gameplay and then we'll just continue on trying to sell some players but if you remember once again let's look at 611,000 transfer budget and 102,000 salary budget so if we back out of here and take a look at what I did before because I did a very similar trial run my first run through and I'm at the same save point where it's match day and so I have as you can see my schedule that this is the same exact place it's match day against my first opponent and if you look at the negotiations this one was much better you can see 867,000 and my salary budget was 141 uh, I actually did end up selling quite a few more um, this guy's still on the list you can see there's the old uniforms um, this one got sold to Nancy uh, this guy went to Sparta Rotterdam he's still here this guy went to another Serie B team and this one went to Extra Madura and the rest of them are all still on my team so I did sell a little bit more um, my first time through so I think I'll probably keep this one and I think I had a little bit more success with my transfer market but everything else I set up the same so I will be playing on episode two I will be doing that coming up soon where I will play um, a match and then after that I will go to episode three where we will continue to try to sell some more of these players and then bring in more youth division players into the into my starting team 
So take a look for episode two coming up next. Just want to finish with there.